here are my ultimate tips for physics problem solving. At the end of this video, I'll also give you the two most common mistakes in my experience. Number one, very often a question will give you a clue on exactly what formula to use and how to approach it. For instance, every time you see molar mass, what you need to do is calculate the number of particles. This number could then be used to be multiplied, for instance, by the energy or something else. If you come across a wire and a diameter, you will need to use the resistivity equation and you can start thinking about how to involve it in the question. Next one, master combining uncertainties. They will appear on every exam paper. Pay particular attention for common mistakes such as having a square. If you see a quantity that's squared, you're going to need to multiply the percentage percentage of certainty of that quantity by the power. Because squaring the quantity is essentially using it twice. Talking about this, also be aware that the significant figures in the uncertainties are different to the significant figures in the values. Let's say that you calculated a quantity up to two significant figures, but all the uncertainties in the question were given up to only one. Your final answer should be the quantity given up to two significant figures and the uncertainty given up to one significant figure. Another very common mistake that I see is is 2D momentum. Remember, momentum is a vector and it can be resolved into its vertical and horizontal components that are conserved separately. For instance, if a particle was moving purely horizontally before a collision, the Y components of the final momentum after the collision would need to be equal and opposite. Practice using the diffraction grating equation. d sine theta is equal to n lambda. To calculate d, the line separation, what you need to do is take one over the number of lines per meter. For instance, if you had 300 lines per millimeter, then the line separation will be one over 300 times 10 to the power of three lines per meter. Master linear analysis and make sure to include that in six markers. For instance, if a question is asking you to explore the relationship between the distance traveled and the initial speed, you can put those two quantities on a graph. If the graph is a straight line through the origin, they will be directly proportional to one another. Also note that you can also prove proportionality or being inversely proportional using data. All you need to do is multiply the quantities accordingly and then if the results are similar for all the data points this will prove that the quantities are either proportional or inversely proportional depending on what you're trying to prove. Be really careful with diagrams especially in multiple choice questions. For instance if you're trying to calculate a moment and the distance to the pivot if you take the wrong distance chances are that the wrong distance will correspond to a wrong answer. Timing in exams is crucial. Don't spend too much time on any single question. And be aware that the last question typically tends to start off relatively easy, so there may be some easier marks coming up. The only way to find out what works for you is to practice under time conditions and experiment with different strategies. And here come the two really, really important tips. Practice applying physics to new situations. In the exam, you will come across a setup or, or a problem that you've never seen before, and we need to teach our brains not to shut down when we're encountering novel situations. The only way to practice that is to always be solving new problems without actually looking at the mark scheme until you have given them a very very good attempt. This way you will be able to tackle anything they throw at you at the exam. And my final tip is incredibly simple but believe me every time I mark papers it is the single most common mistake and that is simply forgetting to carry through a square or a cube when you're going through an equation. Anytime you're using an equation such as Newton's law for gravity please make sure to just be aware that this is an incredibly common mistake as you keep on writing it. Tell yourself not to forget the square. That will really reduce the amount of mistakes that you get. Now, finally, I also need to tell you that these tips are only half of the story. What you need to do is put them into practice. So let's practice. Why not? 
grab a piece of paper, a pen and a calculator and have a look at this video in which we're going to solve lots of really important questions that I guarantee will help you get a better grade. This video is right over here.